Tsarist Russia was miserable for everyone, particularly for women. A set of Tsarist gender views was published in a book called Domestroy, which called for the subjugation of women and encouraged wife beating. Then the Bolsheviks came striding forward to put the communist view of gender roles into play. Part of the communist agenda was equality for everyone, including the half of the population that was normally oppressed. Lenin's view is reflected in his quote from On the Emancipation of Women. Down with this lie. Down with all the liars who speak about freedom and equality for all, while there is still an oppressed gender. Then, after the revolution, Lenin took away all legal discrimination of women, but legal equality didn't guarantee actual equality. Lenin wanted to go about ensuring actual equality on a huge scale, and to do that he used a plethora of different methods. First, he put images of women into his propaganda, such as the one being shown. This propaganda is advertising the spread of communism all over the world and showing any female viewers that they can be part of the movement. Second, Lenin encouraged female Stakhanovites. Stakhanovites were laborers, teachers, even astronauts, who were awarded prizes like new technology, public attention, and even the chance to meet with important political figures like Lenin himself. Pasha Angelina was one of these celebrities, and propaganda was modeled after her. When she was 17, Pasha drove a tractor in an outstanding fashion. She plowed more land than everyone else, even though it was only her first farming season. Her fellow villagers scorned her for spending more time with her tractor than with her family, but Pasha impressed Lenin and the other officials in Moscow enough for them to make her a Stakhanovite. Pasha went to Moscow to receive her awards and became a celebrity. She was so famous that the number of admirers that flocked to her during the workday made it difficult for her to even drive her tractor. Despite all this, neither Pasha or any of the other female Stakhanovites made it to the Politburo. Another way Lenin tried to give women more benefits was by supporting working mothers. In the propaganda shown, a communist mother has a lot of agricultural produce that she probably made on her own farm, while her son, wearing a red necktie of course, was sent to a communist government-sponsored school in hope that the boy will one day become a good member of the Soviet Union, like the soldier, sailor, and factory workers in the background. Another method Lenin and the Soviet government used to make the genders actually equal was by pushing to provide secondary education to women. In the propaganda shown, the female student, note the red star on her uniform, is proudly standing by a male student and holding a This picture is showing female viewers that the communist government believes that women are capable of being productive, educated people as well. The literacy rate in women was particularly low. Part of the reason all this flashy propaganda was big pictures and few words was that the viewer was most likely illiterate. So this propaganda, as well as other propaganda, encouraged not only the increase in literacy rate, but also but also just the general education of women. All this propaganda portrayed over-glorified scenes, like driving tractors, but how close was it to the real situation of women? Pasha was only a best-case scenario. The Tsarist values outlined in Domostroy were so engraved into society that many people, including a fair number as women, continued to resist Lenin's forward-thinking, even radical, gender views. Stalin's rise didn't help the situation. He was less of an advocate for the emancipation of women than Lenin and the Bolsheviks were. It would take a long time to wear away the layers of traditional prejudice that surrounded the woman question, as it was called, and give women not just legal but actual equality.